All right, so I might have talked about this before, but I think it's appropriate to talk about it again. Uh, there was somebody in the one of the comments I made on another video. Uh, they're trying to say that the white horse of Revelation 6 verse 2 is the Antichrist. Yeah, I think it must be this person right here. And just to show you, and they're talking about 70th week and then uh, 70 AD. And I know exactly where they're coming from when they do those. Uh, so right here, that's, this is my point. Um, that uh, this person isn't trusting the Bible, they're trusting in teachers. Alright, so it looks like, okay, so if we go up here, so he, he copy and paste a whole bunch of stuff, alright, so, oh, here we go, so, right up here, we'll go through his copy and paste answer, I know it was copy and pasted because it took him about two seconds to reply. And um, so somewhere around here, he talks about, you know, the right there. Seven, the 70th week is from the revelation of the Antichrist, Revelation uh, 6, verse 1 and 2. So if we go to this here uh, and this is just astonishing and I'm gonna try to make this easy for you to see yeah, here let's do it this way the revelation you saw that right the revelation 1 that means chapter 1 and verse 1 so okay so the very first verse in the book of Revelation says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, Bozo the Clown, I'm sorry, Millions Vanish says the 70th week is from the revelation of the Antichrist. Now, the only way to make that argument is to say that Jesus Christ is the Antichrist. Alright, and it, I don't think people put any thought into how they're being deceived. All right, so if you look at this word revelation, um, wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, um, except I shall speak to you either by revelation has a revelation, has an interpretation, let all things be done unto edifying. Um, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord, the abundance of the revelations. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I went up by revelation may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him talking about Jesus Christ how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery <clears throat> excuse me brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ and again the revelation of Jesus Christ so this word is never used in the context of the Antichrist. It's always used in reference to Jesus Christ. And that's important. It, it really is important. All right. So this idea that the revelation of the Antichrist is not in the Bible. And so let's go to Revelation Six. And I saw 
when the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard as it were the noise of thunder one of the four beasts saying come and see now first of all it's important that the four beasts here are not the four beasts of Daniel okay verse 2 and I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer this is without a doubt talking about Jesus Christ there should be no mistaken about it all right now deceivers will come in and say well that's the Antichrist all right but if we go to like say John 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made all right so when these seals are being opened the first um, the first seal being opened is um, you know this revelation this fact that Jesus he was here from the very beginning all right now if we do, all you have to do is just simply scroll down it just simply read the book of Revelation and understand each of these visions that are being shown to John you read it several times uh, and stop listening to what other teachers are saying you're not gonna get a, the, a you're not gonna get a quick fix you're not gonna get a quick insight that the revealing of the truth is by the Spirit of God and it only comes by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and faith in the Word of God so we get down here to the fifth seal this is very simple but it's very you know also very important um, that you understand that Oh, how do I explain this this so let me say it this way instead the the first five seals have already been opened the sixth seal is parallel to excuse me the sixth seal is parallel to what we read in Matthew 24 mark 13 Luke 20 21 all right so let's go to Matthew 24 and we'll find we'll see the parallel make it real simple for you starting in verse 29 immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the Sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken now read the sixth seal and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the Sun became black as sath cloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their place okay so real simply this is talking about when the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the air when he comes in the clouds of heaven and every eye shall see him and we are lift we that are saved are first the dead in Christ are lifted up and then those of us which are alive and remain are lifted up with them to be with the Lord in the air and then our enemy is gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God out of heaven and destroys them all forever okay so that's what this is that's all that's being talked about here this is another picture if you will being painted to give us an idea of what we can expect or what's you know what's going what's going to happen all right the, that's it's real simple and so you can't say that uh, 
the white horse is the Antichrist. It makes no sense. He, because he doesn't go forth conquering and to conquer. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's going to conquer all things. Now, uh, so also these guys will inevitably, and this is what I've been. Uh, this is what I was going on about. Uh, a while back okay so you go to in Daniel talks about the Messiah all right and so these same people that teach this nonsense and they're all teaching 70 AD everything was fulfilled don't read your Bible just listen to me and that's what they're teaching it really is so we go to Daniel and it talks about the Messiah now these uh, false teachers will say well the Messiah the Prince this is the Antichrist just like they said about the white horse in Revelation 6 now well first of all I guess I should th th let me just point out this is talking about Jesus Christ this is Daniel before baby Jesus so baby Jesus comes and fulfills this and it talks about and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah Jesus be cut off but not for himself he's not doing it for himself but for those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ all right and uh, he puts an end to the oblations right you ever wonder why uh, they don't they being the Jews of today why don't they make offerings to the Lord like they did in the Old Testament like they were commanded to do in the Old Testament well Jesus put an end to all that when he offered his body as a sacrifice once for all so there's no more of that going on and so the idea this is the Antichrist you're essentially saying Jesus is the Antichrist. There's no way to get around it. And this only comes by listening to false teachers. You don't come up with this stuff by reading the Bible by itself, because it's not there. It's clearly talking about Jesus Christ. And so, you go back to the book of Revelation. And we ought to uh, just focus and concentrate on the book of Revelation. Okay, we, I mean, we could go to Zechariah. But, in my opinion, this will only confuse people. Talking about different horses, okay? So, and let's not even, let's not even, I'm not going to confuse you, alright? I don't want to do that. Go into the, because then you have to explain everything, the whole context, which is different than... Uh, what we're reading here in, in Revelation, the context of Revelation 6 is the Lord Jesus, he goes forth, he's conquering, he's going to conquer all. And Revelation 19, also the white horse is mentioned, and, it's, and he's called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. So, Jesus is making war, is that right? Yeah, that is right. He's going to make war against all wickedness. All right, and so you're either going to put your trust and your faith and your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, or you're going to put your faith and trust and hope in yourself that you can be righteous, <laughs> and you're not righteous. I'm sorry, you're not. It's only Jesus that's righteous, and that's the gospel and truth. And that's why, that's why we come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is because we know we're not righteous. There's example after example after example given all throughout the Bible that we can't do it on our own. We need a Savior, and thank God we got one. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so here there should be no question at all that the white horse in Revelation 19 is the Lord Jesus Christ, and so also in Revelation 6 is the white horse the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you're looking for evil and not for righteousness when you look at this verse and imagine it's the Antichrist. 
You've been watching too many movies on HBO. You've been reading too many books and not the book of the Lord. Right? You've been watching too many TV series and not trusting in the Word of God, in my opinion. Because you're not getting this doctrine of Revelation 6 2 and of um, you know the Messiah and the book of Daniel. It, these are not the Antichrist, all right? And so, um, when he shall confirm a covenant, Jesus has confirmed that covenant upon his death and resurrection and ascension to heaven. So, we have a promise, a better promise from the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that is established upon him uh, and not this idea of the the Antichrist uh, you know what what was the promise that he made that means anything it, I mean come on it's not there man it's just not there I can't explain these goofy false doctrines but I can explain to you the true gospel the true doctrine of the Bible in hopes that you can see it for yourself Alright, and the, I, to me this is the key. The sacrifice and oblation to cease that it doesn't happen anymore because he fulfill, fulfilled it upon his offering. Alright, so, and, and again, uh, I think that's all I need to share. Uh, that you look at these copy and paste answers and I'm only going to, when you do this, when you copy and paste something like this, I'm just going to go to the first error and then correct that first error. And to the point that I made to this fella is that, look, if you can't get one thing right, if you can't be corrected on one point, how can you be corrected on a hundred points? Uh, th to me, this is just throwing a whole bunch of poop on the wall and hoping something sticks, right? Yeah. So anyways, that's good enough. If you have any if you have any questions, you still have any doubts about Revelation six, verse two, the white horse, or even you know Revelation or I'm sorry Daniel nine, or the revelation of Jesus Christ. Anything that I anything at all, I want to hear it. Now let's talk about it, okay? And if I'm not being fair, tell me about it too. I want to be fair.